Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my review of Justice League Dark issues number one and two. So there's a new series coming out, spawning out of the No Justice event. It was put forward that a lot of the teams and ideas created during that uh, four-issue mini-series would be followed up on through various series. The most obvious being Scott Snyder's Justice League, but also new stuff like this Justice League Dark series written by James Tinney and the Four. Now, if you don't know this guy, he's really made a name for himself writing a few different things, but the ones that really sold me on him as a writer, especially for superheroes, has to be the Superman and Detective Comics series, which he really excelled at. And he's now starting a new team, and one that I'm really looking forward to, featuring the likes of Wonder Woman, Zatanna, Swamp Thing, Man Bat, and Detective Chimp. This is a pretty solid team overall, pretty much the ideal Justice League Dark roster that I'd want. Wonder Woman's a cool and fun new addition, representing a sort of outsider to the world of magic, but one who has deep ties to the world of magic itself, just not the one that we're typically used to. The spellcasters of this world see her as a foreigner, a god, and an outsider who would meddle in, the, in their affairs. Yet Wonder Woman, as she points out, has been dealing with this stuff since birth. She grew up on a magical island and has a lot of experience with these things. I really like the idea of her leading an iteration of Justice League Dark. It's a creative idea, or it's a theoretically obvious idea, but one that they haven't really done before, and I'm really glad it's happening here because it's a lot of fun. Zatanna feels like a natural choice to sort of fill out the team's roster a little bit more. And the others are great. I'm pretty easily sold on this thing from Detective Chimp's inclusion on this thing alone. I love that guy, and any comic he is in is all the better for it. The presence of Man Bat adds a lot of little, just uh, wild card nature to everything, and the only person I would consider missing from the roster is Constantine, who actually appears in both of the issues so far, so it's not like he's not present in this story. Either he's going his own way, or he's going to officially join the team later on. But with Swamp Thing in the mix, Constantine's long-standing friendship with him and the host Alec Holland is bound to play into things more and more, as we already are getting some pretty interesting ideas for what's going to happen next with the Swamp Thing character, and already Tinian's finding little stories and arcs for each of his team members, as he did with the Detective Comics team that's been fronted in the Rebirth era as well. Meaning that he's nailing the team dynamics as he did in that Detective Comics series and doing it really well. That's the best part of this whole thing. It's really fun seeing Wonder Woman interact, not only with the magic bigwigs like Swamp Thing and Zatanna, but also the wild cards. Detective Chimp and Man Bat really add a little bit of comedic relief here and there, and give this whole thing a, a lighthearted side to some very dark and sinister overtones going on within the whole magical realm. And, the goings-on that are thrusting the main plot forward. So while magic is falling apart as a result of the No Justice events, there's this new big tree in Salem that's messing around with magic and awakening something dark, hinted to be these original owners of magic before mankind took over from it. It's all very interesting, and it presents the same kind of new threat that we've gotten out of Scott Snyder's Justice League series, the Flash series, and a handful of other storylines, Putting together this overall puzzle of the DC Universe expanding in new and terrifying ways that present all sorts of potential new plot lines. So we get stuff like these dead spellcasters being possessed by this ancient force and become these monstrous, almost xenomorph-like creatures, which are directly referenced by uh, Alvaro Martinez Bueno's artwork in this, which is really good so far and has really sold me on the whole series. He does a nice mix of horror and a superhero team blended together into one story very in a fun way that really works. Rolf Fernandez fills in the inks while Brad Anderson does the coloring, and he really sells the work too. Together, this creative team has put together something really fun. But after we get this violent and scary encounter, then Man Bat, who's unleashed his full and original serum, is like cowering in the rafters, and Detective Chimp points out they need to go find a serum to get their friend back to normal. It's that kind of balance between humor and a pretty serious and scary action that really makes this thing fun so far. And already it's featured so many cool magical cameos in just two issues that this is a pretty great series. If you're looking to check something new out, if you're a fan of stuff like Hellraiser or Seven Soldiers or the Swamp Thing era of the New 52 that was really good, 
then this is a new series we're checking out. We're only two issues in, but so far I'm sold on this thing, and would definitely recommend you check it out for yourself. So thanks for watching, let me know what you think of Justice League Dark in the comments section below, and if you like Comic Island, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.